when you're crunching on a tough, stressful project at work and the boss comes in and says, hey, relax. How does it make you feel? Calmer? Chances are it has the opposite effect. Joining us to discuss the one piece of advice we would all like to avoid being given is WSJ's work family columnist, Sue Schellenbarger. Hi, Sue. Great to see you. Why does such a seemingly innocent remark like that often have the opposite effect on a stressed out person? Well, looking stressed out is not cool. It's seen as a weakness in the office. Um, it, it feels condescending to be ordered to ignore your feelings or hide your feelings. Basically, what happens is the boss is piling shame on top of all your stress, and it just makes you feel worse. And coming from the boss, it can sometimes mask other motives. Isn't that right? Well, yes. In worst case, a narcissist boss might basically be saying, I can't stand the way you're making me feel, so stop it. <laughs> um, stress is contagious, right? It, it's possible that your stress is spilling over onto other co-workers. That could be a problem. It's contagious stress. Or alternatively, the boss uh, might feel like maybe it's his or her fault that if he or she was doing better at the job, you wouldn't be looking so stressed out. All a host of issues. So it, Sue, is relaxing on command even physically possible? You know, the human body can ramp up really fast into a state of high stress. The blood vessels constrict, the heart pounds, the heart by the blood pressure rises, but it takes about 20 to 60 minutes to unwind from that. Uh, and so it really isn't realistic to expect somebody to just all of a sudden be all chatty and happy. Absolutely. So then how do you recommend responding to the command to relax? This is something that could take advanced practice. If you can, don't take it personally. Try not to react right away. Stop, take a deep breath, and tell yourself this is an opportunity to work on the cause. If it's unrealistic deadlines and workloads, if you have it in you, say, you know, it is pretty tough to hit these deadlines. I was thinking maybe we could have a team meeting next week and talk about some of the sources of strain. Or put, uh, look in the mirror. Maybe you're causing it yourself. Maybe your expectations are too perfectionistic. Uh, you're expecting too much of yourself. And maybe you are making other people feel stressed out. So, Sue, if we're, seeing, if we're looking at someone that we legitimately care about, a loved one, how can we honestly help calm them down? What should we do? Approach them in a calm state yourself and just acknowledge their feelings first. Wow, Tanya, you know, you look like you're really uh, having a tough day. Um, what's going on? And then ask some open-ended questions. And as the person talks a little bit about how they're feeling, they will begin to relax. And then uh, listen to them, maybe take a walk, help them uh, de-stress a little bit. So it's important to legitimize their feelings and, and say, I, I get it, you know, not, try, not try, try to negate the way they're feeling, correct? Exactly. That empowers them to deal with the cause. So, Sue, so can people be trained to react to stress more positively? Fascinating. Yes, they can. Uh, research by Wendy Mendez at the University of California, San Francisco and others has shown that you can condition people before, for example, a tough test to think of it as an invigorating challenge. Stress is good for me. It helps me really perform at my best. If I feel stressed going in, that's nothing to be afraid of. And she's shown that students actually do perform better on tests that previously scared them. But the training has to come before the stressor is faced by the person, and the motivations have to be from within. Right. You can't order somebody to do this. All right, going forward, I'm going to look at stress as an energizing challenge, Sue. Thank you so much for that. <laughs>